so we're going to review for tomorrow's quiz. I'm concerned about all of this, but I thought maybe we should start with the trig stuff because it's the oldest. Would that be okay if we reviewed that first? So that would be... Can you go to the section of the review that says 5.3b? You got your trig reference sheet handy with the unit circle? All right, what are we going to do first on this problem that's number one right here? Good idea, guys. Let's divide both sides by six. And then this three and six reduces to what? Yeah, negative square root of three over two. Now we ignore the three in here. We treat it as a U substitution question. We look at our unit circle sheet. It does say all. So everywhere that the sign is negative square root of three over two, I'm thinking down there, yes? So that happens at 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Now what continues to happen on these kind of questions is people don't put the plus or minus 2 pi n on until the end of the problem and then it's wrong. Destiny, please put your phone away. What we need to do is take a third of everything, including that 2 pi n, remember? So... If we take a third of all of this, a third of 3x will be x, a third of this will become what? Yes, straight across the top and the bottom. And a third of this back here, the period is 2 pi over 3n, because this changed the period to 2 pi over 3. Then the same thing down on the second one, we'd get 5 pi over 9 plus or minus 2 pi over 3n. Questions? Anybody? All right, number two. Guys, read directions closely. I give a lot of hints in the directions. It says use the Pythagorean identity. So if you're looking at your reference sheet, there's three of them listed. What could we use here? Do you remember the hint? We can't get rid of cosine right there, right? So what could we put over here? Okay. Sine squared can be replaced with a 1 minus cosine squared. So... Real quick, I'd have a cosine squared minus a cosine equals 1 minus cosine squared. Now, somebody's going to be attempted, gonna be tempted to take a cosine out on the left side. Do you want to factor? Not until what? No. Yes, until it's equal to 0. So if I add a cosine squared over here from this side and I subtract a 1 from this side, I'll have 2 cosine squared minus a cosine minus 1. 2 cosine squared means there was a 2 cosine times a cosine. The only way to get a 1 at the back is 1 and 1. But 1 needs to be positive and 1 needs to be negative. When I multiply here, I get a 2 cosine and a 1 cosine. I want it to come up negative. So 2 cosine times cosine, 2 cosine squared, 2 cosine times negative 1 is negative 2 cosine, <coughs> plus 1 cosine would be a negative 1 cosine, and then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Remember, it's okay to think of that like this and factor it, and then go back and put these in. All right, if this is equal to 0, what do we have? If this one is equal to zero, we get the cosine is one. 1. 
So now I am looking for all the places where the x value is 1 or negative 1 half. Um, this is 0 because it says between 0 and 2 pi not including 2 pi, so I call that spot 0. And that one is 2 pi over 3, yes. And this one is 4 pi over 3. Did I get those right, guys? Any questions? Not when it says find the exact solutions in this interval, because there's not multiple solutions. There's just those three. OK? Great question. Anybody else? Don't need a plus or minus 2 pi n when it says 0 to 2 pi. All right, number three. This is just a factoring one again, right? Just rearrange it a little bit. Anybody know how that would factor? Does that work? Yeah, they'd have to be minus and minus to get a minus in the middle and a plus at the end. So quickly, you'd have the cosine is positive 1 half or positive 1. This one does say all solutions. So you'd have, let's see, the cosine is 1 here and 1 half here. So I'd have 0 plus or minus 2 pi n. Is that 1 pi over 3 up there, guys? And this one is 5 pi over 3? Very similar to the last one. Just if you read the directions, I give hints about whether you need a trade. Number four is a basic factoring question. What can you take out here? Tangent theta, and then you'll have tan theta minus one equals zero. So you're looking for where the tangent is zero or where the tangent is one. The tangent is not on our unit circle. So we have to go and use our little pea brains to figure out zero. my little pea brain. You guys have big brains. Zero. Let me find a unit circle here that we can talk about real quick. OK, so tangent is 0 when you put y over x here. Here the tangent is 1 over square root of 3. Here the tangent is square root of 2 over square root of 2. Square root of 3 over 1. 1 over 0 is undefined, and so on. So they wanted the tangent to be 0 and 1. Is that right? So the tangent is 0 here at 0. Is it somewhere else? This would also be 0, right? Then it says the tangent is 1 or negative 1? One? 1. That happens here. Does that also happen somewhere else? Yeah, because you put a negative over negative, you get a positive 1 here. Okay, so... Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I, yeah. I wanted to go back a page or forward a page, whatever. So the tangent was 0 at the ordered pairs 1, 0 and negative 1, 0. So that was when theta was 0 or pi. Mm -hmm. The tangent was 1 when we had square root of 2 over 2 or negative and negative. So those were at pi over 4 and 
Thank you. I was going to say 3 pi over 4, and that wasn't right. So those four answers, everybody okay? All right. 5.5 um, is also on there. Um, by the way, for more practice on 5.3, there are questions on the back of the gold assignment sheet. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? The Chapter 7 um, learning target sheet had a puzzle on the back that had more practice. Also, go back if you want and look at your review for Summative 5. There was a bunch of practice on there. And review for Summative 6. Isn't this 7? Yeah, I don't know. But 5.5. Okay. 5.5, there's more practice on the review for Summative 6, the Chapter 5 packet, and these examples that we're going to go over right now. You could also grab the remediation on 5.5 if you needed practice. These are the kinds of questions. Does this look familiar? Can someone do Pythagorean theorem real fast for these? They're nice Pythagorean triples. 60 squared plus 11 squared and then square root. I want to say it's 61. Okay. What's wrong with this one though? We already know the hypotenuse, right? So it's 21 squared plus something squared equals 29 squared. So we got to subtract. Okay. All right. So the sine of theta, by the way, um, it, it's, this seemed to confuse people, my little arc here. This is actually angle alpha, this entire amount of change. But you use the reference angle down in the corner here always. I, somebody thought the arrow was pointing up in that top corner. We never use that top corner up there, okay? So the angle's down in this corner. So opposite over hypotenuse would be 60 over 61. And adjacent over hypotenuse would be a negative 11 over 61. Does that seem okay? All right. Then we move over to triangle beta over here. And sine, anybody? And the cosine. Okay. Then it says copy the trig identity sheets right off the sheet. When you copy <laughs> sine alpha minus beta... It's sine, cosine, minus, cosine, sine. And I don't really care if you use A's and B's or alphas and betas. Now it says show the work in calculations. This is where you guys got confused. You tried putting in these numbers up here for the angle. The sine of alpha, this entire thing, gets replaced with a 60 over 61. Okay? You don't write sine of 60 over 61. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? <coughs> Cosine gets replaced with a, oh, it's a beta, sorry, 21 over 29. Somebody check me if I did this wrong. Then the cosine of the first one is negative 11 over 61, and the sine of the second one is 20 over 29. Now, the common denominator, you can do this on your calculator, but some of you need to practice that because you're not getting it right when you type it on your calculator. Honestly, what I usually do, it, the common denominator is going to be the same all the way through here. So if I do 61 times 29, my denominator is a lovely 1769. But on the top, the numerator is 60 times 21 minus negative 11 times 20. I just typed exactly that, and I got 1480. Anybody? And I doubt that reduces. You could type it in and do a math enter enter, but it does not. Any questions? I don't think the number's quite that big on the quiz, but it's possible. I have to use Pythagorean triples, uh, uh, big numbers to use Pythagorean triples, because nobody wants to have radicals in that problem, right? 
Okay. Uh, sorry, wrong way. There we go. This one says uh, we're going to use a double angle now instead of a sum and difference. It says the tangent is negative four thirds on this interval. Guys, if you don't draw it in the right quadrant, I'm not giving you full credit. What quadrant is between pi over 2 and pi? Right over here. Now, it says the tangent is negative 4 thirds, so I have opposite over adjacent. Which one of those gets the negative? Okay, do I need to worry about anything else in that quadrant being negative? No. If I do Pythagorean theorem, I get a 5. <coughs> All right, now, which trade would you like to use for cosine of 2 theta? It says just copy one off the sheet, any one you want. Okay, the first one says cosine squared minus sine squared. That one's fine. You can use one of the other ones. You'll get the same answer. Then you replace the cosine with what number? negative three-fifths, and it says you have to square that, and then you replace the sine with four-fifths, and you have to square that, and then you're so supposed to subtract them. This becomes nine-twenty-fifths, this becomes sixteen-twenty-fifths, and when you subtract, you get negative seven-twenty-fifths. That can all be done on the calculator if you're careful with parentheses and such. Any questions? Are you getting it okay on the calculator? Okay. Um, this says may need a trade and or use substitution. What trade is there for this? By the way, some of you are going to think, oh, let me subtract one over to the other side and divide by negative two. Is that something that's going to find, be found in my unit circle somewhere? Oh, wait, i got to square root it now. That's just a nightmare, okay? We need to try a trade instead. Don't try isolating sign here. It doesn't get you anywhere. Because this is a trade for cosine of 2 theta. And then we're going to treat that 2 theta as our u. And we're just going to look for where this is true, that the cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. And that is true at 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. But when I do use substitutions, what do I have to remember? Yes, put your plus or minus 2 pi in now. Because then we're going to do what? Yes, take half of all that. So it'll become theta equals, what is this going to become? 3 eighths plus or minus half of 2 pi n is just pi n. And then when we take half of these, We get 5 eighths and pi n. Any questions on the trig stuff? I think that's everything. Okay, for extra practice, there's remediation worksheets. There's that gold worksheet. Okay. If you want to come in and see your old quiz, you can see what you did wrong on either one of those. That's an option as well. All right, I'm going to go back and start at the top with parabolas. This is kind of not what it looks like on my sheet. How does it look like on my reference sheet? Yeah, y minus k squared equals 4px minus h. Is that what it looks like? So this one would line up. Underneath very carefully like this. 
So tell me something. The vertex is HK, so H is negative 1, K is positive 2, so we have negative 1, 2, and that's the vertex, which is the only point besides the focus that we need. Well, that's not true. We have to find an ordered pair as well. 4P equals negative 4, P equals negative 1, almost wrote 4. So the vertex is at negative 1 up 2, and this one is opening, okay, it's opening left or, uh, I'm sorry, up or down because the y is squared, okay, and the p of less of negative 1, I'm sorry, the p is less than 0, which means it's opening down, okay, so this is going down. What does the P tell us? It does affect the stretch, but the P actually tells you exactly how far what is away. And the focus are both one unit away. So if this is opening down, the focus is one unit this way, and the directrix is one unit back up this way. Now, you can use the reference sheet. We're talking about it. Did I just do this totally wrong? Thank you. Whoops. It's opening left, right? So the focus is here and the directrix is here. Just kidding. Um, so on the sheet, the one that says H minus K squared, it says the focus is H plus P comma K, which would be negative 1 plus negative 1 comma 2 or negative 2, neg uh, negative 2, positive 2. Sorry, that's a positive 2 back there, which is where I put my green dot. And it says the directrix, not the axis of symmetry, is x equals h minus p, which would be x equals negative 1 minus negative 1, which becomes what? 0, right? Again, that was so much easier conceptually, yes? Okay. But now I need an ordered pair. This was the tricky part, remember? Do I want to put in X or a Y for this? I want to put in a Y and something a couple units away from 2. Okay? If we put in a Y is 5, we would have 5 minus 2 squared equals negative 4 times x plus 1. Okay, 5 minus 2 is 3, squared is 9. We're going to divide it by negative 4. And then subtract 1. So 9 divided by negative 4 and then subtract 1 is negative 3.25 and that's good enough because we just want to graph it. So if we go left 3.25, we go up 5. So that was 3 units up. So if we go 3 units straight down, it would also be there. Did anybody try something that came out nicer? Yeah. I don't care. Um, six, I think, would have come out nicer. Six minus two is four squared is 16. Negative four minus, six. I think negative five, six would have worked. Okay which would make it negative 5, negative 2. You get the idea? Everybody okay? Can find an ordered pair and make it halfway accurate? If you can't, it's because you need to practice. Okay. Number 5 is one of the questions I'm most worried about on the quiz. Completing the square, when you have a parabola, somehow really stumps students. 
we need to complete the square on the x's. So I have a negative 2 x squared minus 32 x. But I need everything else to be on the other side, right? Now I rewrote this funny, but I'm going to add the 135 over to the y. I'm sorry I confused you by rewriting. I Everybody okay? I didn't mean to make that. I couldn't do it the other way. What do I need to take out, guys, of both of those x's? A negative 2, so I will have x squared. Be careful. Is anybody with me? I'm taking out of these x terms a negative 2. So I'll have an x squared plus 16 x's plus a blank. I don't worry about the negative 2 out front as I complete the square on this. Okay, take half and I get an x plus 8. x plus 8 times x plus 8 would give me x squared plus 16 x plus 64. So what did I really add to that side? negative 128, which makes this a y plus 7. Now, what's wrong with this still, guys? Where's the 4p supposed to be on the not squared side? So how do we remove it from here? Do not tell me add it. We need to divide it, but what's another way of saying divide by negative 2? Multiply by negative one half over here. So now, if you wanted to switch sides around, kind of confused why all this is on one page on my slides. I'd have an x plus 8, quantity squared equals negative one half, y plus 7. Now, it is, you need some of those, or? Yes, there you go. Um, you do have to tell me the vertex, the focus, and the uh, directrix on this. So the vertex, anybody? Negative 8, negative 7 seems right. Okay, then we have to find P before we can do anything else. This is 4P. If 4p equals negative 1 half, what do you have to do to both sides? Divide by 4 or take 1 fourth. So p is negative 1 half times 1 fourth, which is negative 1 eighth. So then the focus, now, which way is this one opening? I think it's opening down. So the focus, it says, is h, which was negative 8, comma, p, which was negative 7, or I'm sorry, k, plus p, which is plus a negative 1 eighth. So it doesn't matter to me if you write that as a fraction or a decimal, just so it's accurate. It's negative 7 and 1 8 or negative 7.125 or negative 57 eighths. Did I do that right in my head, anybody? Anybody lost? Okay, it's just following the recipe at this point. The directrix says y equals k minus p. Be careful with your signs. It's going to be y equals negative 7 minus negative 1 eighth, which is going to become plus positive. So y equals negative 6 and 7 eighths, or 48 and 7, negative 55 eighths, or negative 6.875 maybe? As a decimal? Well, 
that's how it is on the quiz, so be forewarned. The next section, what happened here? Okay, I want to cut and paste. both that question and this question onto this slide because okay these two are practice writing equations okay is this opening up and down or left and right we have to determine if this value stayed the same for the focus and the vertex, you should be able to look and determine that. Can anybody tell? I would have graphed it, but 9, negative 5, and then this is like 7, 8 point something and negative 5. So it's not quite as far over. So I think it looks like that. Is it opening left? because this would be HK, and then this would be H plus P comma K. Everybody see the negative five stayed the same, right? So then I go to the top and it says Y minus K squared equals four P X minus H. Well, K is negative five, so this becomes Y plus five x is 9, this becomes x minus 9, and h plus p is 35 fourths, where h was 9. So 9 plus p equals 35 fourths. Can you do that on your calculator? 35 fourths minus 9, math, enter, enter. Okay. 35 divided by 4 minus 9. Math, enter, enter. Should be negative 1 fourth. Okay. Now, is that what I put down here? Be very careful. P is negative 1 fourth, but the formula still says what? 4 times P. So 4 times negative 1 fourth is negative 1. Conceptually, that one was a little tricky. If you actually thought about the difference between 9 and 35 fourths, it's a difference of 1 fourth. So 4P would be 4, and then it's opening left, so it would be, or 4P would be 1, it's opening left. Okay, if the directrix is Y equals, did you have a question? If a directrix is Y equals, which way is this one going? Up or down? So the general equation is x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. Okay, what's the vertex? That's h and k right there, right? So x plus 6 and y plus 9. But it also says the directrix negative 19 halves is equal to k minus p, but we already know k is negative 9. Did I go too fast where I got that? Okay, so what's negative 19 halves plus 9? I think it's negative 1 half. Is that right? So then I take the opposite and I get p is 1 half, positive 1 half. If I had graphed this, the vertex was left six and down nine, and this is down eight and a half. No, something's wrong. That's down nine and a half, yep. Okay, so it is opening up. Okay, I'm just double checking that it makes sense that it's opening up. But do I put a one half in here? What goes in there? Four times one half, which would be a two. 
Questions? More practice on that, on the homework on parabolas. That brings us to hyperbolas. Um, here's an extra practice question that is on your actual review. If you know the vertices of a hyperbola and you know the asymptotes, how do you go about writing the equation? Negative 5, negative 6, and negative 5, negative 12. So this is a hyperbola, so it's going like this. Okay, if you find the midpoint, it will be the center. Negative 5, negative 5, the midpoint is negative 5. Negative 6 plus negative 12 is negative 18. Half of that is, okay. So how far is it from the midpoint to either one of those points? Three units. So it's three here and three here to get to that middle. That actually means what's three, guys? That conceptually, that's the A. So guess what this slope right here is telling you? A over B. So I think we're done. When it opens up and down, the general equation for our hyperbola is y minus k, which would be what? Nope. y minus k. y plus 9 minus x minus h, which would be x plus 5. Okay, now be really careful. Under the y goes a squared, which would be 9, and b is 13, so b squared would be 9. Any questions? I think I might have one more of those somewhere, but for now let's worry about graphing one of these real quick. This is y minus k, x minus h, a squared, and b squared. Before I do any graphing, while I'm waiting for you to find worksheet 9, how do you find c squared when it's different? When it's an ellipse, you subtract, but when it's a hyperbola, you add a squared plus b squared, which would be square root of 34 on this one, guys. So almost six. All right, start with the center. This is horrible graph paper. I'm not gonna be able to draw this. Where's the center? Be careful. H is what? H is two and K is negative two, not the other way around. All right. Up and down, I go how far? Underneath the y, up and down, a is 3, which is one and a half boxes. Left and right, b is 5, which is two and a half boxes. Then you have to draw your auxiliary rectangle to get credit. And the diagonals, they cannot be random lines. They should be going through the corners. Now, is this one opening where? So it is up here, just barely touching and not touching the asymptotes. And at the bottom of the box is a vertex. All right, so the vertices, when it opens up and down, are h plus or minus a comma k h two plus or minus a which is three comma k which is negative two h and k all right so i have five negative two and negative one negative two as the vertices that does not look right that's because that's the formula for sideways guys 
Don't listen to me. When it opens up and down, the vertices are at h, which is 2, comma, k, plus or minus a, negative 2, plus or minus 3, which would make the vertices at 2, negative 5, and 2, 1. Now does it look better? Okay, that's why we graph and do recipes and conceptually we double check ourselves because Hofbauer is prone to make mistakes. Okay, the foci, it says, are at h comma k plus or minus c, which would be 2 comma negative 2 plus or minus square root of 34, which you could leave that way. But if you type that so you get a decimal, you just need to be checking that it's inside of the curvature. Negative 2 plus the square root of 34 is 3.8, so it's up here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And negative 2 minus the square root of 34 is down at almost negative 8, so it's down here somewhere. So it's reasonably inside. Then I need the asymptotes. That's the other thing I have to have. How do I write the equations of the asymptotes? Y minus K, which would be a plus 2. Plus or minus, is it A over B or B over A on this one? So it's 3 over 5. Everybody good? It's not 9 over 25. And then it's X minus 2. Did I miss anything? Any questions on that one? All right, then you have to be able to complete the square um, and find eccentricity. I'm gonna do this one, number 27, because I'm out of time. I'll do the rest of them before I stop the video, okay? Or after you guys go, but this number 27, if I take a negative 9 out, this is off worksheet 12, I'll have an x squared plus 4x plus a blank. Now for the y, there is no y term, so I just get a 4y squared. I don't have to complete the square. It's a y plus 0. Over here, I have a 72 plus a blank. This becomes x plus 2. Quantity squared is 4. What did I really add over there then? Negative 36. Then I have a plus 4y squared equals 36 after I add that. Guys, you have six-minute passing, and the bell isn't going to ring for two more minutes. I don't know why you're all packing up. You need to divide all this by 36, but you also need to do what? If you want this to match up with the form that's on your sheet, you need to move the positive one out to the front. So we have y minus 0 squared over 4 goes into 36 9 times. 9 goes into 36 four times, but that's the one with the minus. Okay, so the center is at negative 2, 0. A is 3, B is 4, and it opens up and down. Everybody okay? I'm going to go back and complete this square again since I already did one like that 22 right there. This is the kind, okay, you have to take a 9 out of both of those x terms. You'd have x squared plus 2x plus blank. What do you have to take out of the y, guys? A negative 1. So you have minus 1 times y squared plus 2y plus blank. And then the other side has equals 1 plus a couple blanks. All right? I will finish a couple of these and put them in the slides. Abruzzo did her stuff in a different, you know, might have done some more of them too, I don't know. Anybody have a question? I don't know what I talked too much about. 
All right, so this one you would take half of two and get a plus one. Squared would be a one. Nine times one means we're adding a nine to the other side. Minus half of this one is also a plus one because we took the negative one out. So we put a one here, but one times negative one means we're adding a negative one over here. So the other side, when we add all that up, is nine. Divide by nine, thanks. This one actually opens left and right. So the center, H is negative one, K is negative one. It goes one in either X direction and three in the Y direction. So it's a little tiny rectangle here with very steep asymptotes. And it is opening left and right. So the vertices would be um, negative one plus or minus one comma negative one, so I'd have negative two negative one and zero negative one. If we, this is a squared and b squared, so c squared equals one plus nine. C is the square root of 10. So the foci would be at negative one plus or minus the square root of 10 comma negative one, which would be inside. And then the asymptotes, I'm writing them way up here, I don't have room. Asymptotes would be y plus one equals plus or minus um, this time it would be B over A. Remember, B was 3 and A was 1, so 3 over 1 would be 3, and then X plus 1. That should make sense. The box went up 3 and over 1, okay? Make sure that your slope matches what you have for your asymptotes. All right. Um, I skipped... One more practice from worksheet 12B on writing an equation. The midpoint, given the vertices, the midpoint will tell us the center, which would be at three comma, we add those, so we get 20 divided by two is 10. Okay, those line up, they have the same X, so that means this over three and up 22 over three and down two. Okay, lines up vertically. Sorry, that picture's horrible. So it is opening up and down. So it goes y minus k squared minus x minus h squared equals one. Now the distance between these is 2a, which is 24. The distance between this and one of those is 12, okay, which is A. Now we have a problem because according to this, all right, B over A or A over B, this one should be A over B equals 3 over 2, but A is 12, okay. If A is really 12, then B would be, cross multiply, should be 8, okay? So if A is 12, B is 8, and then when you're doing it sideways, I'm sorry, up and down, this is A squared, which would be 144, and this is B squared, which would be 64. I think on the first time we gave this quiz, we did not make this so that it reduces I don't guarantee about the retake, but I think the A and B are far more clear on the quiz than they are on that question. Um, and I did not mention eccentricity. If we had gotten to the end of this question over here, OK, 
Okay, that one. Eccentricity should have been C over A. Um, C would have been square root of 13. A was 3. And the square root of 13... Divided by 3 would have been 1.21 or 1.20, which would have been greater than 1. So eccentricity should be pretty clear if you use your reference sheet. Just double check that it makes sense for a hyperbola. And there's extra practice on that all over worksheets 11 and 12, 9, 10, 11, 12. 